G'day, welcome to Down in the Woodworks. So how many files do you think you could fit into one small project build? Stick around, I'll let you know. This makeup mirror belongs to my youngest daughter and not long after she got it, the base broke. So I thought it'd be cool to make a new stand for it out of timber. First thing to do was to dismantle the mirror and the internal LED light and the wiring. So the idea was to remake the original shape of the stand by gluing together some pieces of timber in a Y shape and tracing the semicircular shape onto it to be cut out with the bandsaw. Using some offcuts I had, I started by flattening one edge and one face on the jointer. I then flattened the opposite face with the thickness planer and trimmed the second edge on the table saw. Then using the miter gauge, I cut the appropriate angle on the two side pieces so they could be glued up to make the Y shape. The center of the stand was the finished width. So using a compass, I marked out that width on the side pieces and then cut out the shape on the bandsaw. To install the wiring into the stand, the idea was to resaw it down the centre, cut a groove into one of the halves and then glue them back together. I installed a temporary fence onto the bandsaw to help me resaw it evenly. I should probably mention here that this build was mostly experimental and I was just making it up as I went. I thought it would make a less obvious glue joint if I swapped the two halves and glued them together using the original outside flat surfaces. Next was the task of making the groove in one of the halves and the only thing I had to use was a center drill. I did say this was experimental. Although it was a bit rough, it actually worked and the groove was going to be completely hidden anyway. Then with the two halves clamped together, I drilled a 10mm hole on each side to house the electrical connections for the LED light. And this is where the first fail occurred. If you look at the bottom right of the screen, you'll see that I had the grooved piece around the wrong way. With the holes drilled the wrong way around, the only solution was to trim the ends off and drill them again. At this point, the height of the sides was only just long enough to still work. To stop the wires from getting glued in place between the two halves, I coated them in some oil so the glue wouldn't stick to them. Well, the oil ID seemed to work. I sanded the final shape of the stand using my belt sander on its side and I positioned it over the cutout in my table saw. And with the insert removed and the dust extraction switched on, it worked a treat. I used the cross cut sled on my table saw to trim the tops of the stand, but I must have moved it slightly with my hand because the first part of it caught the back of the blade and took out a big chunk of timber. Fail number two. Also, the oil I used on the inside wiring had bled through the wood quite a bit, causing a lot of staining. And this would have also been a problem with applying the finish. Fail number three. At this point in time, I just thought I've got to start again and make a new one. I decided to go for a much simpler and contemporary design of a square base and two vertical uprights. The two uprights were going to be 20mm square, each made up of two pieces 10mm thick glued together. The reason for that was so I could cut a shallow groove on the inside of the two pieces to form a clear channel for the wiring when glued back together. After the glue had dried, I ripped them down to final width. And yes, that is a riving knife made out of 3mm MDF. For some reason I didn't film the next step here where I squared up these holes with a chisel. To fit the battery holder into the base, I made up this quick circle cutting jig for my trim router and routed out a circular groove to the required depth and then removed the rest of the timber with a forcing a bit.
I wanted to dress up the base a bit because it was looking a bit plain. So I used an odgy bit in the router to put a decorative edge around the top perimeter. Fail number four. I forgot about the hole for the switch, which just happened to line up with the bearing on the router bit. And fail number five. The cutter profile came too close to the edge of the mortises for the uprights and tore out the sides. Keeping my cool, I decided to trim off all four sides of the base and just add some store-bought moulding. And a quick tip, depending on the profile of the moulding, you can use another piece turned the opposite way to give you a flat surface for clamping. Well there you have it, finally got there in the end. I suppose persistence does pay off, and keeping you cool as well. Regardless of all the setbacks I had making this mirror stand, my daughter still loves it, so that's all that matters. If it's your first time to the channel, huge welcome to you, and uh, if not, thanks again for taking the time to watch along. If you haven't done so already, please uh, consider subscribing to the channel, just to show your support, and also so you don't miss out on any future videos. Give it a huge thumbs up, and also share it around along with any of my other videos. But in the meantime, you guys all have a great day.